are in Shenandoah National Park today and for the next couple of days. Right now we are taking the Lewis Falls Trail to Lewis Falls. And then uh, we'll end up on Cat Knob, maybe eight, eight and change miles from here. But uh, it's colder than we were anticipating. We'd originally intended to go to the Smokies, again, a different section, uh, but given that we're in central North Carolina and we have to pass through western North Carolina, which is currently a mess because of uh, Hurricane Helene, we had to pivot and go north instead of west, and so we are in Virginia today and it's a little chillier up here than we were expecting. Um, but that said, I think we should be okay. The nights are gonna get uh, close to freezing, but not, not quite. Starting out from the, the start of the Lewis Falls Trail, unlike most of the hikes that uh, I tend to find myself on, this initial downhill is a nice gentle warm up. Uh, in 1901, Virginia Congressman Henry Flood uh, proposed the idea of a national park in the Appalachians. Um, until that point, from the 1800s into the early 1900s, uh, all the national parks in the United States were uh, in the western part of the country, with the one exception being uh, Acadia National Park in, in Maine. Um, now his proposed legislation did not pass, uh, even though it did have the support of President uh, Teddy Roosevelt at the time. I think it was around 1926. Um, Stephen Mather, if I've got the name right, the NPS director uh, at the time, uh, he, he recognized the need for a park in the south, in the southeast, and so they began putting together plans to uh, figure out, a little steep down here, uh, to figure out where they might begin uh, putting that. Uh, President Calvin Coolidge, uh, he authorized the uh, NPS, the National Park Service, to begin acquiring acreage for both uh, what would become Shenandoah National Park as well as the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Uh, Virginia ultimately appropriated around a million dollars to go toward the uh, creation of Shenandoah National Park. And some of that money came from the Northern Virginia Park Association. And their goal was also to acquire land and funds to create a park. And so those two uh, authorizations and interests happened to coincide at a point when things were gonna work out. So uh, one of the members of that Northern Virginia Park Association was uh, Skyland Resort founder, George Freeman Pollock, and also a realtor in the area named uh, L. Ferdinand uh, Zirkel. Um, and so those two helped come up with that initial million dollars. Right now, there's not a whole lot of stuff to see. I mean, the trail, it's a trail. Trees are in between color. That was one of the things uh, that uh, had we been in the Smokies, this was supposed to be right around the time frame when you'd see peak color in the leaves. Uh, for Shenandoah, it turns out that's going to be next week. We may get a chance to see some color. There are a few spots that are changing, taking on their autumn, autumn tones, but by and large, it's still mostly green through here. Um, although there is a number of leaf litter uh, on the trail, kind of camouflaging some of these rocks. I'm not sure if the uh, microphone is picking it up yet, but you can hear falling water in the not too distant distance. 
So I'm guessing that we are very close to Lewis Falls. And sometimes sound moves in funny ways through trees and mountains, so we will see. Right here is part of Lewis Falls. I'll try to get more footage of, of the total drop, but the way the rocks are situated, it's a little bit difficult to fit it all in frame. But uh, Lewis Falls is the fourth highest falls in the park. I'm not sure about some of the heights of some of the other falls that we'll see during this trip, but uh, Lewis Falls is 81 feet. Water's not super high, which is nice. Uh, can be a lot more powerful and, and maybe impressive if uh, it's been after a rain or whatnot. But anyway, Lewis Falls. So we just came up from the Lewis Falls little spur. And now we're working our way toward the first real section of, of, a, of elevation gain. We are just about to hit the AT coming off of the uh, Lewis Falls trail. I'm going the wrong way, so I'm gonna turn around and go the right way. That's what I get for talking instead of paying attention. Fortunately, I got Eric and Matt with me. I don't know where we're at. <laughs> My, uh, yeah, there's a white blaze right there. We spent last night at Big Meadows Campground and uh, we woke up or when I finally got out of my tent in the morning there was a lovely rhyme of frost on the tonneau cover of my truck and I was thinking it's gonna be super cold and well it's not super cold it's not super warm which is also nice but this uh, bit of a breeze in this more shaded part of the trail here is actually pretty welcome having come up that uh, that uphill portion that first uphill portion To, uh, Tanner Ridge Road. This is uh, Tanner Ridge Cemetery behind me. Tanner Ridge was added to Chicago National Park in 2022, so it's only been a couple of years that it's been considered uh, actual, actually part of the park itself. Uh, I was not able to find any real information about this particular cemetery. I mean, most of the headstones are relatively well maintained. Uh, right here, I see a 1979, uh, 1917 birth date, uh, 1893. So I imagine they probably do go back a ways if I were to explore the individual headstones. In fact, I may just walk through. I want to be res respectful and not walk on anyone's grave. I know in the Smokies there are a lot of uh, cemeteries as well. Looks like the grounds are kept pretty, pretty nice, and there's some 
relatively recent uh, arrangements. We got some more miles to cover, so we're gonna keep doing that. We've seen a, I don't know, a few groups of people today, and the first part of me thinks that's a little bit strange. But then I remember that uh, Shenandoah is very long, very, very skinny, and it's mostly bisected by Skyline Drive, and so there are several uh, points along the length of that road that allow you to park and get off, uh, ex uh, explore what could be just day hikes, or not even a whole day, just an out and back in an hour or two, but uh, it's one of the nice things for people who aren't into the backpacking aspect of things. We're at a parking lot right here. So right here, we're about to cross over Skyline Drive. We'll build double check here, sure there's no traffic. And there is not. So later on, we'll be following it for a bit of a stretch, not just crossing it, but that's not for a day or so. you can be forgiven for thinking that uh, this point is nothing more than just another section of the AT, but it's apparently the summit of Hazeltop, which, uh, let's go back up here a little bit. Depending on your source, is either somewhere between 3,770 feet in elevation or 3,812 feet. So I would assume that it's within that range on maybe a little on either side, not sure exactly, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we're at uh, Hazeltop. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, part of the trail. I suspect that in the actual winter when everything's off the trees, you get a decent view, a decent view over the valley and the next horizon, but uh, it's a little bit blocked. By a little bit, I mean almost completely. Hazeltop is also uh, the third highest peak, again, if you can call it that, in Shenandoah. So here's where we leave the AT and join the Laurel Prong. So Laurel Prong for a while. And, uh, I wish that, uh, that there were just a little bit of a better way to get access to the, to the edge of the, the ridge that we're on because you can almost see across the uh, valley here at uh, some of the, the uh, features uh, on the well, there's a couple of horizons. There's like the, maybe a closer horizon and then beyond that, a second horizon, assuming that you can label horizons like that. Let me come up here. Let's see a little bit, maybe. Uh, yeah, just kind of get down here. Yeah, I mean, there's just trees, but you can see a little bit through there.
from Cat Knob. And uh, again, it's not really a discrete peak uh, as far as what you can tell from hiking this trail. But it is about 3,232 feet in elevation, I believe. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty much uh, hiking over it now. And it's, you know, it's part of the trail. Uh, it makes sense why they would call it Cat Knob Trail if uh, <laughs> Cat Knob is right in the middle of it. Originally, we planned to head toward Jones Cabin, Jones Mountain Cabin. Uh, let's see how, how things shake out. Uh, as I was saying, it just, Feels like the miles have been reluctant to give themselves up. Uh, makes me wonder if we're gonna have issues with the next couple of days. So we may have to modify our plans a little bit. Uh, maybe not. Again, we'll see how we'll see how all of us feel, and we'll go from there. We did end up uh, pivoting and altering our plan somewhat, just given how. Like I was saying earlier, how slow today felt, just as far as the miles being rather reluctant to come. We are going to cut off Jones Mountain. Well, technically we are on the Jones Mountain Trail, but we are cutting across, uh, skipping Jones Mountain. Uh, today's rate, uh, I mean, our pace hasn't been terrible, uh, generally. I don't think. It's been just under three, but uh, tomorrow we were slated for 12 miles, 11.8, but, and I'm just a little concerned that we may end up trying to set up camp and cook in the dark when it drops down to uh, whatever it's gonna drop down to. I think tonight we heard it was supposed to hit 39. So, not, not warm, which should be fine, but hopefully we'll have a little bit of daylight remaining in which to get all of our stuff put together. And then tomorrow we'll see if we'll stick to that day's plan or what we need to do, uh, if anything, differently. So we've reached the junction where the Jones Mountain Trail now lets you go toward Fork Mountain Fire Road or Fork Mountain Trail. We're gonna take the trail because that's the direction that we want to head. Well, we've basically got camp set up for the night. So I think the next step is boil water, rehydrate, eat, and then probably go to sleep. Yeah, that's probably the primary thrust of how things will go. Watching people eat is probably not terribly exciting, so see you all in the morning. <laughs>